This program is brought to you by Guiding Light Assembly. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this morning. As your word goes forth, we depend on you, Spirit of God, to make it plain. Open our hearts to receive your word and let us not just be hearers, but doers of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As the deer panteth for the waters, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. You alone are my heart's desire. alone are my strength and shield. prayer this morning that it will all be about him not anything else Psalm 15 Psalm 15 Psalm 15 we we'll read from verse 1 to 5 quickly please Psalm 15 Lord who may abide in your tabernacle who may dwell in your holy hill who may dwell in your presence he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil in his, to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord, he who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does it take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. We've been talking about the, the presence of God, dwelling in the presence of God, abiding in his presence, staying in his presence. And it's something we all want to do. It's something we would love to do because there's joy in his presence, there's protection, there's peace, there's rest. He leads, he guides, he directs as we depend on him. In his presence, there's the fire and power of his presence to melt away every mountain, every obstacle, every hindrance that we would ever face. In his presence, he gives us victory over the works of the enemy. In his presence, our fears and our insecurities become nothing. Our pains, our heartaches, our, our headaches, our burdens are lifted in his presence. We are changed and we are refined. We are transformed in his presence. We become better people. He works on our character. So it's, as believers, we need to live, stay, breathe, in his presence and that is what one thing that Christians today are dealing with or have to deal with the Bible says who is it Lord that will make his home make his home in your tabernacle who is he who will rest who will rest on the mountain where your sanctuary is who is he that has the right to enter your tent, to enter your holy mountain. He that leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing which is right. He who speaks the truth, he walks without blame. He does not slander with his tongue. He does, he does no evil to his friend, nor takes up 
a reproach against his neighbor. He is not hasty with his tongue. He does no wrong to his fellows. He utters no treacherous word. Never defrauds a friend or slanders a neighbor. One who fears the Lord, but who, whose eyes despise a reprobate. He who has sworn to his harm, he does not change. He keeps his oath, though he may lose it. Though he may lose by it. He is true, come what may, to his pledged word. One who will keep a promise even to his own detriment and will not retract who stands by his pledge at any cost he takes no interest on a loan he is not to be bribed against the innocent he who does these things shall stand firm forever he shall never fail he shall never be brought low why because he dwells in the secret place of the most high praise the lord so we are talking about those who will dwell in his presence. And you know, in these days, there's so much darkness, there's so much evil, there's so much wickedness, even in the body of Christ. And God is looking for people who will stand for him, people who will be an example, especially in our nation today. We're all crying in this nation and over the nation because we've seen what has happened. And we're saying, God, what is the church doing? Where are we going? Because it looks as if even the church has allowed the world to come in so much that like, we're losing our compass. But not so. Because I believe that if some people would stand for truth and righteousness, some people who will stand in God's presence, we can make a change. Hallelujah. And this is truly the season of change. Because you see, when the church speaks, the government should listen. When the church speaks, the government should adhere and heed to what the church is saying because we are the voice of God. We are the voice of God in our land. And if we have believers who do not fear God, and if we have believers who do not spend time in his presence, we are lost. And we, not everybody can just go and say, oh God, oh God, oh. No, no, no. There are prerequisites if you're going to tabernacle, if you're going to stay and abide in his presence. I pray that in this season, as darkness covers the face of the earth, we will shine because you see, we are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth. And the only way we can shine is through Christ carrying his glory, making the world know that there is a different way to live. And make no mistake, there's another world coming. And we need to be prepared for that time when we will stand before Jesus and give an account of our stewardship. Praise God. So we're talking about walking uprightly. Walking uprightly. Being saved. We need to check our hearts. The Bible says, investigate my life, O God. Check our hearts. Do you truly love God? Do you truly, or is it just when you come to church on Sunday? What happens when you are at home? Many people are Christians on Sundays and devils during the week. We can see, do you working righteousness, being blameless in his sight? You know, these are all protocols of entering into his presence, having access to God's presence. Who shall abide? Who shall? Are we really abiding? Are we, you see, because when we do it our way, it just leads to another way. We have examples in the scripture when Nadab and Abihu burnt a strange fire, they were, they were destroyed. I pray that there will, no, but none of us will be destroyed in Jesus' name. We need to, I just came here this morning to say that we need to take our walk with the Lord very, very seriously. Very seriously. We sang this morning, trust and obey when we walk with the Lord and abide. Abiding, staying, making your home and preparing yourself to enter in. Praise the Lord. 
speaking the truth, speaking the truth, speaking, somebody says speaking the truth. That means when I say yes, it is what? Yes. When you tell me something, I don't need to doubt you. I don't need to check it out. I know that your yes is yes and your no is what? No. Free from backbiting. Backbiting, just using our mouths anyhow, gossiping, tail bearing, false witnessing, whispering, slandering, false accusation, vain talking, defaming, tattling, lying, deceiving. All these things are found in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. These are things we need to stop. We need to stop these things. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Children of God, we need to check what, uh, uh, what comes out of our mouths. You should see Christians quarrel. It's a terrible thing. You should see, how do we quarrel? You, just, you quarrel, and how do you stay in God's presence if you're just talking about people? You hear things and you just speak, say things you don't even understand. How? Is that possible? Praise the Lord. Free from backbiting. But I always say, the, the Bible says backbiting, right? So I'm going on and you're biting at the back. It means nothing. But slandering, we have to be careful what we say with our mouths. This, we praise God with our lips and the same mouth we use to do terrible things. We kill people. We kill people with our mouths, with our tongues. How can we stay in God's presence? And you see, when we use our mouths that way, it affects our hearts. Because when we misuse our mouths, then it's difficult to forgive. May we not, you see, it's a terrible thing. For a believer to die and people are wondering, did they make it? I'm not sure. Oh God, I pray they made it. No. We, we must be different. Staying in his presence, not doing evil to your neighbors. And I was just thinking that today, especially in highbrow areas, we don't know each other. We don't know our neighbors. How do we evangelize? How do we reach them for Christ? Okay, your, Muslim, your, your neighbor is a Muslim, so you don't like him. No. We do good. Just that we do good. Praying for them. Praying for our neighbors. Loving them. Helping them. Reaching out to them. Not shutting ourselves out from people who need our help. From people who need our help. Because God has helped us, we must help others. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. You don't despise your neighbor. Not just, your neighbor is anybody. We have the examples in the Bible. Just being nice to people. Just being good to people. Sometimes it just takes a smile. Just being open. Just being ready to share. To have that heart of compassion to have that heart of mercy because God has been merciful to us. And when we don't evangelize, it's a problem. It means we hate people because we don't want people to, to perish. I pray that when we stand before God on that day, everybody will come with their troop. You'll come with people following you. You'll not just stand alone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just, you know, sometimes people go through issues and you're saying, oh, they deserve it. When well, we shall see, maybe they did this, maybe they that. It's none of your business. Mind your business. Pray for them. Praise God. I mean, look at Paul. When he got to the island and the snake fastened itself on his hand, they said, ah, this guy is going to die. You know, many times we just, we believers say things we shouldn't say. Oh, that person, oh, oh, that person, oh, we cast all kinds of aspersions. You cast no slur on your fellow man. Amen? Just let it be. Hold no reproach to, on anybody. We need to pray for one another. And we should hate 
sin, S-I-N, sin. We need to hate it. We need to despise it. I know that there is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That is why when we make mistakes, we run to God. That is why God has given us his spirit to help us to stand as believers. But we can't play with sin. We can't joke with sin. The thing with sin is when you do it the first time, it's so you repent. The more you do it, the easier it becomes to do it. It's like lying. Sin is what? Sin. I call it success in nothing. We hate it. We must hate it. And ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Nobody is perfect. We are all on a journey. God is helping each one of us. But you see, do not play with sin. Do not joke with it. Don't say, oh, I can, I, I can, I can handle it. No, you can't. Because it's so easy to fall. So easy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if you're offended, it's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, as pastors, we hear all kinds of things. Pastor, you can, pastors are here. How, do, how do, do couples stay in the house and don't talk to each other? They can't forgive one another. They hate one another. It's a terrible thing. We must hate sin. Love, somebody say love, love, love. Loving God and loving one another. We have to honor those who fear God. This thing about honor is so important, especially in the body of Christ. I believe that in this house you honor your parents, right? You honor your spiritual parents. You need to do what? Honor them, respect them. We honor God, we respect him, we hold him in reverence, and we honor those who are in authority over us. Then, keeping your word, keeping your word, hmm. keep, somebody say, I need to keep my word, even if it hurts. That's why you are not hasty to make promises. Please, if you say, I will pray for you, pray for that person. Just don't say, I'll pray for you and you forget. Praise the Lord. Even if it hurts, your yes must be what? Yes. And your no is what? No. We, there's no gray area in this matter. Your yes is yes. Keep to your word. You want to stay in God's presence because you see God himself keeps to his word. Has God promised anything and failed? No. He keeps to his word. And as his people, we want to imitate him. Take no advantage of anyone. Don't take advantage of people. Just love people. Help people. Be there for people. Refuse bribes. Refuse bribes. You can bless people, but refuse bribes. This is what has, is destroying our nation. This thing called corruption. Because when you bribe, you justice, there can never be justice. Praise the Lord. And protect the innocent. We are talking about dwelling in God's presence. That is having a voice where it matters. Having a voice with God. Knowing that you represent him. Spending time with him. You want to go in there and you know that God has helped me. The blood of Jesus washes me. God sees my heart. He knows that I want to serve him. I love him. And because I love him, I love people. Because I love him, I try to do my best. Because I love him, I try to, to be there for him. I want people to see me and know that truly God is good. Please, when you go back home, I don't have much time. I, lo I love teaching the word, but I have to keep to the word. Go back and read Psalm 15. Study it. There's so much in that psalm. Because in this season, we must stay in his presence. That is where we can find everything we need. In this season, and I said yesterday, things are only going to get more and more difficult. Things will get darker and darker, but we will shine for him. In Jesus' name, amen.